Hey, welcome back. Our last video in this series will deal with what are we supposed to do with this C sharp. Okay, we've got an accidental in a major key. It's not the leading tone. So, what do we do? Well, like we learned last week, if we have an accidental, it's probably functioning in a different key. So we're tonicizing, or we're temporarily using a different key for just a couple of chords. So what key is it that we are temporarily in? Well, your biggest clue is going to be the chord that follows the altered note chord. Okay, this is a fifth scale degree, so it could be harmonized with either a five or a one. Um, it's not going to be a one in this case because the leading t or the uh, the altered note here, the secondary function chord, cannot lead to one. It has to be a five of a different chord, a five of a different key. So one's not going to work. So we're going to use a five here. So this is going to be a something of five. Now, anytime you have a raised pitch as your altered tone, if it has a sharp on it or a natural in a flat key that's raising that pitch by half step, then that's going to act as or function as the leading tone in your tonicized key. So C sharp is the leading tone of the key of D, which is the chord we're trying to go to here with this five chord. So that's that's working out really well for me. I'm feeling like that's probably a 5 of 5 going to 5. Okay, now more commonly you'll see actually a 5 7 going to 5. 5 7 of 5 going to 5. So let's figure out what the bass line for that would be. And I've got myself a half cadence here. Anything going to 5 is a half cadence, right? So my 5 chord is a D. And that would be spelled D F sharp A. So I use this fifth chord, uh, the fifth of this chord, as the root on this chord. So that's an A. If I'm doing a, a seventh chord, it's A C sharp. There's my altered pitch right there. E G. So bass line on that, or bass note on that, if it's in root position, is this A. Okay, now what do I use to approach a secondary dominant? We haven't really talked about that yet. Um, since a secondary function chord is leading to something, we treat it like the chords that would normally lead to that. In this case, I've got a 5 of 5 going to 5. So something that leads to a 5 chord is called a predominant. So the other chords that that lead to a five chord would be a two or a four. Those are predominant chords. So if it's something that leads to a five, I'm going to treat it like a two or a four. So I could approach this with either a one or a six. Those are the chords that I could use to approach a two or a four. Same thing's going to happen with a five of five. Now, if this were, for example, something totally different, I was doing a, a 5 of 2 going to 2, I would want to approach that one from a 1 for sure, because the only other chord that that uh, goes to 2 would be uh, maybe a 4 or a 6. I guess I could approach that one with a 6 also. So, generally... Well, you know every time you're going to be safe coming from a 1. So if I can come from a 1 chord to my secondary function chord, then that's great. Uh, does this one work? Yes, it does, because this is the fifth scale degree. So that can fit in a 1 chord. So I'm going to go 1, 5, 7, to 5, to 5. Put my bass notes in there. Check to make sure that... Uh, all my tendency tones are resolving correctly. So this is here the secondary leading tone has to go up, which it does. We're safe there. Um, I don't have any chordal sevenths written in here. I don't have any 
uh, primary leading tones, F sharps, in there anywhere. So then all you have left to do now is the rest of this phrase. Work backwards, find your options, choose a good chord progression, then check, put in your baseline check to avoid parallel octaves and fifths, and resolve your tendency tones correctly. And have fun doing it. I'll see you next time.